Okay, uh, today's lesson uh, 11.3, and it's the basic trig identities. Okay, so, so here's where trigonometry is heading, and we're going to head here at the end of the chapter. Uh, we are heading toward trig equations. So, and solving trig equations. And the thing about solving trig equations is you're solving for the angle. You know, it might be, you don't need to write this, you know, something as simplistic as sine x plus 3 equals, uh, I don't know, 2.9, something like that. And we're going to solve that trig equation. But then it could be something a little bit more interesting. And, I don't know, it could be tangent x sine x plus 3 equals 2.9. And we could have a couple trig functions in within any equation. And the methodology, methodology to solve involves trig identities. So really what's going to happen is this kind of equation you'll deal with in advanced math, those of you that take it next year. Um, we'll do trig equations here at the end of the week, uh, but we'll not get into the many that are, that are involved like that. However, uh, it is my intent, it is courses, it is an Algebra 2 courses, you know, job to basically get you to begin to learn the identities. And the idea then is to understand relationships between trig functions. That's what this is all about. I'm going to try to get you to learn about three or four basic ones, um, and then you'll go from there. Matter of fact, you guys would have done some of this in geometry. So... Uh, matter of fact, the first one, the Pythagorean identity, should be familiar to you because you should have dealt with this topic in geometry. All right, so first off, to get set up, let's make sure that we understand notation. So if you had something like this, I would think you'd know what that means. It's the sine B times the sine B. Pretty clear, not a problem. Mathematicians love to save pen strokes. So someone figured out a cute way and instead of putting the squared outside and using the parentheses, they put it right after the trig function. It means exactly the same thing. It just saves you two parentheses. And they like that. That's two less keystrokes every time. But you have to understand that when they stick the squared after the trig function, they mean sine b times sine b. So first off, just make sure that you're aware of that. Don't get messed up by the notation. It's just a notational thing. It's just a shorthand way of saying it. You guys are well familiar with shorthand and shortcuts and all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's all that is, just a shortcut. And uh, as long as we know what it is, then we're fine. Okay, the first one is the Pythagorean identity. It's really simple. It's the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared, and don't miss this, of the same angle, right? It's sine x, it's cosine x. They're the same angle. And anybody remember what they equal, Alex? One. They equal 1. So the sine squared x plus the cosine squared x equals 1. For example, grab your calculators out, then grab your calculators. Let's go with nice round number. How about 10 degrees? I want you to punch in. Now you're going to have to do this squared, right? So uh, probably the way you're going to punch is uh, with most of your calculators, do you square something after you get the value or do you, do you have to hit your squared button first? All right, you got to figure that out. All right, so let's use 10 degrees. Go sine of 10 degrees and square that plus cosine of 10 degrees and square that and hit equals and you should either be at 0.99999 or 1. All right. Is calculator saying 1? Okay. Because, indeed, the sine squared x plus the cosine squared x equals 1. Now, again, please take note. It's the same angle. And you can do it with any angle. Sine of 37 um, squared plus cosine of 37 squared will equal 1. You can do that with any angle. All right, so I just want to prove it here with fractions, not a big deal. Uh, you got to understand what I'm doing here. I'm just using a 3, 4, 5 triangle. If I stick A there, if that's 3, that's 4, and that's 5. So do you agree the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse 3 fifths? 
and the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse four-fifths, right? And so if the identity is true, then we should be able to square three-fifths squared plus four-fifths squared, and it better equal one. All right, if the identity is true, then the value of the sine of A, which can be in decimal form, like when you guys just punched in your calculator, you were figuring it out in decimal form. Right here, it's in fractional form. All right, so 3 fifths squared is a 9 20 fifths, right? Square the 3, square the 5. 4 fifths squared is 16 20 fifths, square the 4, square the 5. And last time I checked, 9 plus 16 is 25, all right? And 25 20 fifths is indeed 1. And look at that. The identity is true. It's amazing. It's remarkable. It slices, it dices, it does it all for $49.95. And if you want, we have a bonus item. We have two bonus items. They're free. All you have to do is pay additional shipping and handling. All right, that's like another 20 bucks, but you know. All right, so uh, when you learn the Pythagorean identity, and this is just something you should memorize. You should memorize sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. But you should always keep in the back of your mind the other forms. So what if we took the Pythagorean identity and put the cosine squared x on the other side? Right? So you still got the 1 on the right, but you're going to add a negative cosine squared x to both sides. Don't neglect this form of the identity. So you end up with sine squared x equals 1 minus the cosine squared x. All we did was take the original identity and add negative cosine squared x to both sides. Not a big deal. If you wanted to, you could say the sine of x equals what? Come on, it's sine squared x. The sine of x would equal plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared x, right? Just take square root of both sides, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things you can do. There are there are zillions of relationships of all the trig functions. There are just a host of them. And, of course, you can do the same thing with the cosine. You can add negative the sine to both sides or negative sine squared to both sides, and you get 1 minus sine squared x. Uh if you were to get a an identity problem on the ACT or SAT, I'm I'm thinking 75% of the time it's going to involve this trig identity. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. About 75% of the time. This is like the main one. And this is one everybody should know. And so this is one you definitely have to memorize. Not hard, but you should know. And you should know the other forms. And the second most common one is the tangent. The second most common is a tangent. And again, the angle doesn't matter. I'm using beta here, just trying to get you used to all the different forms that you can have. The tangent is simply the sine of beta divided by, anybody know this one? Cosine of beta. So the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. All right, so grab your calculators. Let's use the ever popular 10 degrees again. Take the sine of 10 degrees divided by the cosine of 10 degrees. And then somebody raise your hand and tell me what that number is. Somebody raise your hand and tell me that number. Luke, what do you got? 1763. 1763. All right. So 0.1763. So take the tangent of 10 degrees. Is it the same number? Oh, my. How did that work? Because the tangent of 10 degrees equals the sine of 10 degrees divided by the cosine of 10, 10 degrees. It's a relationship. And so this is the second one that you should have memorized. Probably, you know, 24% of the time it'd be the tangent equals sine over cosine. If you're going to find a question about the relationships. And if you know the tangent is the sine over the cosine, the cotangent must be... The cosine over the sine, right? Because it's the reciprocal relationship. That's easy enough. Hey, let's do this one. 
let's do um, let's do the tangent identity, but let's use um, the relationships, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. All right, so let's take tangent. Let's use an alpha just for fun. And we're going to use the sine, and we all know the sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, right? And we're going to do the cosine. I'm going to do it in green because the cosine is in green, and we're going to do the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right, and all this is is a division problem. And again, most of you, I hope most of you know you can just cross off those H's right now, the hypotenuse. And that leaves you opposite over the adjacent, which is, oh, guess what? The tangent opposite over the adjacent. is that amazing? And for those of you that aren't catching on, division problem, multiply by the reciprocal, and the H's go away, and you have O over A, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about trying to show that these relationships are indeed true. All right, so first one, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. you got to get that in your memory. you got to get that in your memory. Second one, tangent of the angle equals the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. you got to keep that one in your memory. Uh, three, don't forget the reciprocal identities. Don't forget the reciprocal identities. So the sine we know is 1 over the cosecant. Or the cosecant is 1 over the sine. The cosine, of course, is 1 over the secant. Oops, that's a K. Or the secant is 1 over the cosine. And, of course, the tangent is 1 over the cotangent. Or the cotangent is 1 over the tangent. And by the way, let's throw in one more. Don't, don't forget the relationship between the sine and cosine. The sine of theta equals the cosine of, anybody know this one? 90 minus theta, right? Which was just back to the cosine of 10 equals the sine, um, the, uh, the, the other way. The sine of 10 equals the cosine of 80, right? The sine of 20 equals the cosine of 70. The cosine of 5 equals the sine of 85, right? You can go vice versa, right? Cosine A equals the sine of 90 minus A, right? Same idea. Cosine 30 equals sine of 60, right? 90 minus 30 is 60, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. We're not going to use those much here coming up, but I just felt like might as well review that because that is important. Right. Okay, so let's see if we can now begin to muddle our way back through remembering how to go about proving these things to be so. And look, there, there's a lot of different ways to do these. A lot of different ways. Your brain may think right off the bat, all right, I'm going to do this to that. Okay. Fine, that may not necessarily be wrong. There's more than one way to start. There's more than one way to go through the middle. But when you're done, you ought to come up with the left side equaling the right side. So here's the thing. If tomorrow a certain person turns in his paper and then everybody else's work looks exactly like his work, you know what the reality is? More than likely, you copied it. All right. Lots of luck to you when that person isn't going to do your quiz and test for you. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways to go. Point number two on these. It is possible to go down a road and hit a dead end. So in real life, if you go down a road and you hit a dead end, do you just like turn around, sit down and say, okay, I guess I'm lost. I just sit here. Is that what you do? You go to the corn maze. You hit a dead end. Okay, I'm just going to sit down and cry. It didn't work. I can't get it. I can't get out of the corn maze. Mommy. All right. Text 911. I have an emergency. I'm stuck in the corn maze. Please help me. 
you just got to hang in there and try a different track. Sometimes I'll start them and I'll get going and, and it, everything I'm doing is true, but then it doesn't take me anywhere. I'm like, nah, that didn't help me. It didn't get me anywhere. And so I got to try a different, a different approach, a different situation. All right, so you're looking at this thing. I don't know. When I look at this thing, this is pretty, pretty interesting. There's a lot of different ways you can go. So you just kind of just start stuff. Um, that should be lowercase, by the way. No big deal. Yeah, what do you want to do? You can convert stuff. You can move stuff. It is an equation. You can add stuff. Um, you can move stuff by adding their opposite to both sides. You can deal with fractions. You can do all that stuff. Yeah. Look, I look at this thing and I say, oh, the tangent A is on both sides. I can just get rid of the tangent of A, right? If you're wondering how I did that, back to math 101, add a negative tangent A to both sides and it's gone from both sides, right? Okay, what would you do next? Um, like, I would add a positive cosine squared to both sides. And la-di-da, that's the Pythagorean identity. And so if technically, though we've gotten to an identity, it is nice to go one more step. And according to the Pythagorean identity, all of that is 1, right? So we end up at 1 equals 1. You should really take it to the last step, even though it is an identity. Not a big deal. And get the left side to equal the right side. <laughs> Look, you can get all creative, and you can do all kinds of other things if you want, but that's one way or one course to steer when trying to do a trig identity. Is that the best way to do it? I don't know. Maybe not. Who knows? All right, so this one, you've got the cotangent over the cosecant equals the cosine. And again, you got to sit there and decide, how am I going to deal with this? Do I want to turn the cotangent into 1 over the tangent? You could. Do I want to turn the cosecant into 1 over the um, sine? You could. Um, do I want to multiply both sides by cosecant theta? You could. Do I want to multiply the right by cosecant theta over cosecant theta? You could. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go. So you just have to decide on a track you want to take and go after it. All right, anybody got an idea? Open to you. Give me a, give me a move. Give me a move. Don't everybody jump in at once. Go on. Give me a move. Think. Try so Look. All right. So, look. If you don't try anything, you don't get anywhere. Right? Surely you guys are old enough to know that. If you don't try anything, you go nowhere. 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 All right? And I can add to that, no guts, no glory, all right? All right, Destiny, what do you want to try? Um, what we did earlier, how we changed the, the, you know how cotangent of theta or whatever, mm -hmm. you can change it to adjacent over opposite? Okay, so you want to go with, all right, so Destiny is saying, and we'll go with it, that's fine. You, you said, so we're going to go with the adjacent over the opposite for the, Cotangent, you want to do anything else? All right, so the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Okay. All right. Get rid of the opposites, and we have the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And last time I checked, the adjacent over the hypotenuse is the cosine. And Destiny did that one using the relationships of the ratios. Okay. I was thinking of moving the cosecant theta to the other side. That's the way I would have gone. Is there any right or wrong way to do it? No. So, you know, if you take this same thing, I was thinking of taking this cosecant theta and moving it to the right, right? Things on the bottom go to the right across the equal sign. Again, you're just multiplying both sides by cosecant. Um, 
I don't know, in my mind, then I was thinking the cosecant is one over the sine. And guess what? The cosine over the sine is the cotangent, right? That was one of the identities we just did a minute ago. The cosine over the sine is the cotangent. All right, another way to do it. There's others. You can go other routes than that. There's more than one way. I will tell you this, though. Just be careful in falling in love with using the ratios because they don't always take you there the easiest route. Sometimes they do. But just be careful. Just be careful. Just be careful. All right, let's try another one. Well, that one looks like fun. Secant Z minus sine Z times tangent Z equals secant Z times cosine squared Z. Whoa, Z. All right. So, take a look at it. Got to try something. What would you try? Got to try something. What would you try? Luke, what do you want to try? Cross out. All right, so let me make an analogy. Let's see if we can cross them out. Let's see. If I had 8 minus 2 times 4, and it equaled secant is 8 times, and we don't have a cosine squared, so I make it anything I want, 3 squared. I can just do that. But that's okay. You tried something. Um, the, the problem is the secant Z is tied in the cosine Z on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, Luke, the secant Z is tied into this the sine Z tangent Z. Hey, but at least you tried something. At least you tried to go somewhere. And you know what would happen with that, Luke? You would keep going, and you would get to a point where you couldn't prove the identity. You'd hit a dead end, and you'd say, okay, you know what? I'm going to start off a different way. I'm going to try a different track on this. Let me try something else to get going. That's reality. That's how these work. That's how they go. So if you make a mistake, you'll end up not being able to prove it. That's fine. The best advice is to start in the beginning because a lot of times you'll make the same mistake again, and so I would start off differently a second time. All right, let's try something else. Let's try something else. All right, let me, let me steer you a little bit. So don't do this in your notes. How many terms are there? One or two or three or four? How many terms? How many terms? You're scaring me. Two terms. All right. Terms are separated by addition or subtraction. This is a term and this is a term. This is all one term because of multiplication. There are two terms. On the left, this is one and this is one. I should do it that way to add up to two. And how many terms are there on the right? One. All right. So guess what? Somehow we got to get two to be one because the right's one. How else are we going to get there? All right. Anyhow, it's just a food for thought. I like to get these things. I like to get these things to be able to be one term. That's my idea. All right. So that's what I'm after. So think about the left side. Can we change anything on the left side? Taking a look at the secant Z minus sine Z times tangent Z. What can we do on the left-hand side? You've got a couple different routes you can go. What can you change? You've got to change something. Everybody look up here for a second. How many of you have ever played chess before? Let me see your hands. you played chess. Okay. I play chess as well. You know that that guys that are really great chess masters, they're thinking like, I don't even know how many moves ahead. Buku. All right. You know how many moves ahead, I think? Like two or three. I'm just, I just, you know, in, in my mind, I'm like, all right, there's no way I can figure out what I'm going to do, he's going to do, 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 I'm going to do, he's going to do. And then he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and then I wasted all my time. All right, I'm just, I just don't do that. Look. You're not going to look at this and say, all right, I know move one through seven and I can get checkmate. That's not how these work. Take a move. All right, take a move. Just don't lose your queen. All right, just take a move. Go for a move. All right, so again, you're looking here. 
you got a couple possibilities of stuff you can change that's on the left using an identity or or relationship all right so who's got an idea of something to do on the left all right you're gonna feel stupid Julia You could, um, if you do everything correctly and you do everything to the same side and you understand that the left is two terms, but you're looking too far afield. All right, folks, come on. This is where I want you to look. I want you to look right there, and I want you to look on your other page and all of the um, relationships that you had, and I want you to figure out what you can change. All I want you to do is change either the secant the sine or the tangent into something else. That's all. Just change the secant or the sine or the tangent into something else. Dolores. Change the tangent to um, sine over cosine. All right. Look at that. We got something. This is remarkable. It's amazing. We have something. All right. She said change the tangent. Into the sine over the cosine. I like it. It did something. Instead of sitting there and doing nothing. Sitting in the corn maze and crying for mommy. All right, we did something. You all agree that's true, right? Okay. <laughs> Let me give you an analogy. If all I had was this. 3 minus 2 times 7 over 5 what would you do? That's all you had was this. What would you do? What would you do? Well, hey, okay. What would you do? Luke? Yeah, all right. Find a common denominator and then add the numerators and put them over the common denominator, right? Would we then get two things to be one? Isn't that what we're trying to do? Get two things to be one? Okay. So look, just the fact that it's trig functions don't go all goo goo gaga. All right. What is the denominator? Say it. So how do I get a secant z over one to have a cosine z on the bottom? All right. Hopefully you agree. How about multiply it by cosine z over cosine z, right? I'm just getting a common denominator. All I'm trying to do is work on the left-hand side, see if it can take me anywhere. Right? So I'm just going to multiply by cosine z over cosine z. All right, what is my left-hand side right now? Cosine z, secant z, minus sine squared z, all over cosine z. We agreed? I'm not even worried about the right-hand side yet. Okay. Now you're looking at the stuff you got, and you got to realize, where, where do I want to go from here? What do I want to try from here? All right? Anybody want to try anything else? you got to look, and you got to look at what you got. And you got to think about your identities. And you got to think about the stuff we know. Look, we don't know a whole lot right now. We know sine squared 1 plus cosine squared 1 equal, or sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and the two different forms of that. We know the tangent equals the sine over the cosine, or the flip, cotangent equals um, cosine over sine, and we know that the sine is 1 over the cosecant, and the cosine is 1 over the secant, and secant is 1 over the cosine, and tangent is 1 over the cotangent, and cotangent is 1 over the tangent. That's it. So we're going to use some of that stuff on this left-hand side. What's the next move? You got to try something, otherwise you're not going anywhere. Next move. What does your say, Alex? If your says cosine z, secant z, minus sine squared z, then that's what over cosine, and that's what mine says. Yeah. The only, the only problem is, that's what, uh, where am I at here? Yeah, over sine squared Z. So that's a Z, not a T. You go a different way? Yeah. Okay. So you're probably done already, which is fine. All right. So you're looking at this because you kept going and we didn't. 
So come on, look at that. What can you change? Again, if you try nothing, you will not go anywhere. Okay, folks. Some of you need um, some thinking direction. Let's go orderly. Do I want to change the cosine into something? I could. It would be a benefit. If you don't see anything there, do I want to change the secant into something? I could. It would be a benefit. Do I want to change sine squared z into something? I could. Wouldn't be as good, but I could. Do I want to fool with the denominator? No. All right. Three things on the top. You could change any of the three, and it'll get you somewhere. And you should all know how to change the three, because what do you have? You got cosine squared one plus sine squared one, or sine squared z equals one. You have the other two forms. What else do you have? The tangent and sine of the cosine, cotangent, and what else do you have? The reciprocal functions. That's what you got. So, can somebody give me one thing to do out of those three things on the top? Hunter. Now, I wanted to do the secant and one over the cosine. Either way, would have got you the exact same place, right? <laughs> changing the cosine into 1 over the secant or changing the secant into 1 over the cosine, guess what that gets you to? These divide out, and that whole thing is a 1. So let me rewrite clearly. I have 1 minus sine squared z over cosine z, still equaling secant z cosine z okay what else what else come on you got a page with about four things on it maybe five what else can you change it's all about changing stuff what else can we change josh You're close, though. All right, so watch. Everybody look up here. Josh was focusing on just this part and changing it. Why don't you instead look at that part? Gee, why did you give that to us, Mr. Scarfy? Ah, because I wanted to waste some time and just, you know, fill up some space. Uh, like, because you use it a lot? See 1 minus sine squared x? Do you see that? Where are we at on this problem? Uh, how about like 1 minus sine squared x, right? There it is right there, isn't it? So what is it? It's a cosine squared, and in this case, z, right? So that's where we're at right now. And is this identity not true? That's po And that's possible, right? This thing may not be true. I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Because I'm just going to end up with a cosine and no secant, right? It's possible. It is possible. And it is where we're going to end up. All right, cosine squared z over cosine z leaves you just cosine z. And this is where we're at. And I somehow missed my secant on the left. Oh, bummer. All right, so this is not true. Though everything we did was, was true. We make sure that we didn't make a mistake, and I don't think we did. Sine over cosine, good. Sine squared over cosine. Cosine over cosine, good. Definitely 1. 1 minus is cosine. Yeah. So this one doesn't work. Hunter, thought? Well, isn't the, on the right side, you have cosine squared? Oh, you know what? Okay, I'm not even looking. I should look at everything, right? I'm like this, not seeing my squared. Okay, good. Thank you. So if we work the right then and finish that off, that's a squared. Let's finish on the right. Thank you, sir. And how about, again, changing the secant to 1 over the cosine. And the cosines divide out. And now I like it a whole lot better. So you never know because I design all these, and you got to make sure you don't make a mistake in the midst yourself or not think that you 
did something. All right, cosine z equals cosine z. Beautiful. All right, we're not going to get to this one. I'm going to just tell you what I would do again, though, because this is a common thing. Two terms, right? See, I would right off the bat be getting a common denominator and adding the numerators and putting them over a common denominator. So you got to look, because the left side is one term, the right side is two. That's a pretty common thing when you have more than one term on a side. you got to look, get a common denominator, add the numerators, and go from there. All right, you guys got to do 1, 2, 5, 6, 8, 10, 16. B or greater, do 24. Uh, B minus or greater also include, or B plus or greater also include 32. Quiz tomorrow, law of sines, law of cosines. Don't forget how to figure out area involving what we learned about area. And then also a trig function or two to just give you some fun.